All right, so this is a follow-up from uh, my first video, Emotional Abuse, Emotional Abuse and the Marital Covenant. A lot of times, um, people ask the question, why are you standing for a marriage that puts you through so much pain? Why are you standing for a marriage that the, the pain of it, the, the agony of it is horrific, it's terrible, it's horrible. Why would you stand for something if it's not been effective, if it's not going um, the way marriage is supposed to look? Why would you continue to stand for marriage? Why would you continue to um, go along with such such a uh, heart instructions, uh, really heart instructions um, in a marriage that's not being fully effective, that's not healthy, that's not even worthy to stand or worthy to 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 be in. Why would you continue on in a in a in a marital covenant like this? If if that person does not respect you, if that person uh, does not uh, treat you correctly, that person is mishandling you as a as a spouse. Why would you continue on in this? And I have one answer to that question. Just one answer to that question. And that is because God has instructed you to do so. Mm -mm, what's that? Because God has instructed you to do so. Listen, you're not standing in your marital covenant because of all the years you invested into your marriage. You're not staying in your marital covenant because um, you want to, um, you know, just hang in there for the kids. You're not staying in your marital covenant because, you know, one day your spouse is going to recognize you and come to themselves and say, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I'm this, I'm that or whatever. You're not even standing in your marital covenant for your own desires at this point. When you are in this place in your marital covenant and God has allowed you to stand in your marital covenant, he has specifically instructed you. And this is why I always emphasize this to my clients, to people I come in contact with, to contact with. You have to know because this is not something that you do naturally. This is not something that you would do in your own strength. This is not even something that I would recommend you do if you have not specifically get have gotten instructions from God. This is not something I would recommend you to do if God has not specifically ordain you, ordain you, has grace you to do so. Sometimes people ask that question a lot. Why would I be in an unhealthy marriage? Why would I stay with a person who don't want me? Why would I continue going on with a spouse who um, has clearly made it very, very clear, very, very evident that they don't want any doing with me? Why would I do this? Why would I do this? And the answer to that question every single time, every single time, not my will, but God's will be done. I'm not doing this in my own strength. I'm not even doing this because I want to do this. Okay, come on, Jesus. I'm doing this specifically because God has asked me to do it. And if God has asked me to do it, he is strengthening me. He is preparing me. He's equipping me. He is helping me on this journey. God is the one who is helping you on this journey. This is not, I'm trying to do this to please my spouse. Okay. This is not, I'm trying to do this to make a uh, life better for myself. This is a love walk. This is a faith journey. This is putting aside yourself for the benefit of someone else. This is that Bible verse that talks about laying down your life for your friend, laying down your life for your friend. And even though your spouse may not be friendly, and even though your spouse may not be the best, even though your spouse may be the worst, this is specifically saying, I am going to lay down my life for the benefit of this person because God has told me to. Because you're not going to even be able to lay down your life for that person in your own strength. You may desire to, you may want to, you may say, oh, you know, I love this person so much. I want to make sure that I'm here or I'm not going to never leave. That's why we have to be careful with our wedding vows. I give people options to say they wedding vows when I marry them. I give them that option, but... I ultimately, ultimately want to express to them, listen, you got to be careful about making vows to a person. When you're making a vow to a person in a marital covenant, you got to hold on to that because you're not just making that vow to that person. You're saying to God, I'm going to stand by this person's side. I'm going to be with this person. I'm going to go all the way through. And then hard times come knocking at your door. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't ready for this. Oh, wait a minute. I wasn't expecting this. But you vowed to love this person with your whole heart. You vowed to love this person through good and bad. You vowed 
allowed to love this person through all that stuff. And so you have to be careful with your words and how you say things and how you how you uh, uh, vow to a person when you prepare for marriage. With even with all that, even with all that, God is a forgiving God. God is a graceful God. And I'm not on here to condemn anyone, but I just felt this, this, this nudge in my spirit to express a person who is standing in a marital covenant, especially in an unhealthy marital covenant. Because there's sometimes when God will tell you to go through restoration and you see the changes of that person. You see that person change and you see that person getting better. You see that person, you know, healing. You see, you know, you standing and working things out with your marriage um it's, it's it's turning out and working out for your good but there are other times there are other times when you are in this thing and you know you heard from god and you know god has specifically instructed you to stand for your marriage and this thing is getting worse you're like wait a minute jesus <laughs> this is not what i signed up for i thought that because i made a decision to stand i thought because i made a decision to follow you i thought because you told me to do this you had my back you had my back but instead this thing is getting worse this thing is getting worse and what god is simply doing in that in that in that particular marriage covenant he is using you he is using you he is using you and you have to say thank you you have to say thank you because it's an honor if god sees you and looks at you as that person that he can use to be a vow or uh, to be a, a representative a representative of him in your marital covenant that is an honor that is an honor it's hard but it's an honor it is an honor god in a sense is using you to be um his ambassador in your marital covenant for that unbelieving spouse for that spouse who's dealing with a for that spouse who's like, I ain't used to, you know, this type of thing. Or, you know, I ain't never seen this growing up. And, you know, all y'all the same. All y'all Christians are the same. God is using you for that hard task. And even if, and I tell people this all the time, especially my wife and, you know, uh, ladies that I come in contact with. Even if God is not saying, okay, I'm going to bless your marriage and bring it back around. And even if God has made a decision to say, you know, I just had you in this position for this reason, for this, for this purpose. And if that marriage doesn't work, it doesn't work. Even if God makes a decision for that to happen, guess what? what guess what that person was able to benefit from you that person was able to benefit god use you allow you to be that person in that person's life to make them better to draw them to to draw them to him to draw him, them closer to them even if that person make a decision and say you know what i'm still out even if that person make a decision and say you know what i'm not gonna do this even if that person decide to do whatever they decide and god releases you from your marital covenant the bible says what god has joined together let not man separate but but if God himself releases you from your marital covenant, you have done your part. You have done your part. And in the long run, God will take care of them and God's going to take care of you. God will take care of them and God's going to take care of you. Sometimes this journey of marital restoration, of marital frustration, it can seem like, I don't even know what God is doing in this. I don't even know what God is doing in this hour. I don't even know how God even got me up in this. Like, I don't even know what to do in this situation. But God has said, I got a plan. I got a plan. After you have prayed, after you have waited, the next thing for you to do is to trust me. You have to trust me. You have to trust me on this path. You have to trust me on this journey. You have to trust me. You have to not take things into your own hand and know that I have not brought you way out into deep sea to leave you out here to drown. I have not brought you out here this far to leave you out to drown one or two things is going to fall in place either god is going to release you from that marital covenant or god is going to restore that marital covenant it ain't nothing but one or two words release restore release restore either way it goes god gets the glory out of it all do you hear me god gets the glory out of it all i know people look at the bible sometimes and don't necessarily follow what it says but if we go back to first corinthians 13 the love of a chapter that talks about love is patient love is kind love is when we talk about that when we go into that in detail and see what it says you are literally laying your life down for a person it is the love walk Marriage is a love walk, especially an un.
healthy marriage because nobody signs up to be married to a person for it not to be effective. I want you to get that. Nobody signs up for a marriage for it not to work and flow. I want you to understand that. Nobody's saying I'm going to just stay in this unhealthy marriage and just do this thing and because I'm so desperate and I, I love my spouse so much and I don't want to, uh, uh, my kids to grow up without uh, another parent in the house or uh-uh. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody doing that. Ain't nobody doing that. So for you to be in this position, in this place, please understand. If you see a person standing for their marriage to come, and don't just assume, oh, they're so desperate. Oh, oh they, they really just putting up with any old thing. Oh, oh they just, uh, you know, going through going through that hard stuff with that person and 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 that person uh just doing them oh any kind of way oh i wouldn't do that if i was you or oh, i wouldn't do that if i was them that's right you won't but you don't know what god has told that person and you don't know what god has instructed that person to do and you do not know the outcome of it come on holy spirit you do not know the end results you do not know what the promises god made to that person you do not know how god is working things out on the back end the front may look real bad real bad real bad real bad but if god told Told you to stand for your marriage to covenant. You stand for your marriage to covenant. You stand and you be a good steward over your emotions. You stand and you be a good steward over your temple. You stand and you be a good steward over what God has uh, 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 equipped you with. What God has uh, allowed you to do. What God has instructed you to do. This is not about wanting your will. The Bible says, not my will, but your will be done. Not my way, God, but your way be done. Even if that means I have to suffer. Even if that means I have to go through some hard times. Even if that means I have to go through some things that's not necessarily mine. You know, sometimes spouses, we walk in this place of entitlement, entitlement, entitlement. Oh, I know he didn't. Oh, I know she didn't. Oh, I know doggone where you didn't try me like this. Oh, I know you didn't do this and I know you didn't do this. And God was saying, no, 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 no. This is a humble walk. I tell my premarital couples this all the time. Don't come into this marriage to come that you're going to be all puff, puff, big up, blow up, all that kind of stuff. Marriage will humble you. Marriage will humble you. And if God has a bigger purpose for you, if God has a bigger uh, 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 assignment for you in your life, man, he just may tell you to stay in an unhealthy marital covenant. He may tell you to stay in an unhealthy marital covenant, but that does not mean if he tells you to stay in an unhealthy marital covenant that you have to be unhealthy in it. No, that's not what he's saying. Just because your marriage is unhealthy, just because that person that you're married to may be unhealthy, you have a responsibility to steward your self-will because you are not just any old person. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You have me living on the inside of you. And because I am living on the inside of you, you have a responsibility to steward your self-will. You do not allow, allow your spouse to mishandle your temple you do not allow your spouse to mishandle your emotions man this thing got me worked up because i am just like oh on this this is just like it's it's something in me just got i got to get this out i got to get this out don't just assume that a person is in their marital covenant in an unhealthy marital covenant just settling just settling no I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if they're in that unhealthy marital cup, they have asked God on several occasions, Lord, release me from this assignment. Lord, release me from this assignment. Lord, release me from this assignment. I don't want to do this no more. Lord, release me from this assignment. This is not a natural thing. This is not a natural thing. And this is why I try to express it to, to, to clients all the time. Marriage is a spiritual covenant it's not just a natural covenant it's a spiritual covenant and it's only god who can give you the grace to stand in an unhealthy marital relationship it's only god who can give you the grace to look at a person that you love day in and day out and have to not say anything to them it's only god who can give you the grace who can give you the strength to be able to maintain a home like that a a, a, a walk like that it's only god it's only god and we have so many questions about well what about our children or what about what people think or what about the outside god has specifically if god has specifically given you instructions to stand for your unhealthy marital covenant and you thought that maybe it would change for the better but instead it is getting worse best believe everything else around you is going to work out for the good romans 8 and 28 
All things work together for the good. You have to stand on that. You have to declare and decree, declare and decree. This unhealthy marriage is not my portion. God is my portion. This unhealthy marriage is not my portion. God is my portion. And with God, I can do all things through him. I am strengthened. I can do all things through him. I am strengthened. You have to declare and decree over your own life. So you won't get sucked into this thing. You have to declare and decree over your own life. This is not my end. This is not how life ends for me. I am just walking through. I am just going through. I am simply being obedient and doing what God has called and asked of me. I am doing what God has called and asked of me. And even though I don't like it, even though I would prefer not to go this route, even though I would prefer to go differently, God has called me to this. And so God has, since God has called me to it, I want to make sure that I do it well. I want to make sure when I'm, when it's all said, done and over, I did my part because God told me to stand. I did my part because God graced me to stand. I did my part because God equipped me to stand. This is a hard, 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 hard walk for most, for many. And I do not recommend it. You got to know that you know that you know that you know God has has specifically given you this and if he has given you the assignment he is going to see you through it if he has given you that assignment to stand in an unhealthy marital covenant he is going to see you through don't ever think god is just sitting up in heaven just allowing these things to happen when you see things are going a certain way and you have those moments of 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 doubt you have those moments of of uncertainty you have to look up into the hills from which come your help all of your help comes from the lord come on jesus you when you have to know the word you have to go in and knowing the word you don't got time to be sitting around just doing whatever and in the meantime in the meantime in the meantime while god is continually working on um on your marriage and covenant and in the meantime while he's continuing to do what he's going to do get busy in your other assignments get busy doing what god has purposed you here to do you're not just here as a spouse that's probably one of your earthly assignments you're not here just as a parent that's probably two of your earthly assignments but you're also here to represent christ on earth and that means even if you're not representing him fully in your marital covenant even if you're not fully representing him as a parent you represent him in other areas god has called you to purpose you are here for a purpose and so don't get hooked on oh my marriage is going this way my marriage is this way and god hasn't healed my marriage yet and my marriage is so this and my marriage is so that do not make your marriage a idol get busy with your other assignments if god has called you to stand for an unhealthy marriage if god has called you to stand for an unhealthy marriage you have an obligation a responsibility you are accountable to steward yourself well you go to god concerning your marital covenant and you get busy doing other work listen i hope that's been a blessing to you i'm not trying to scream or yell but sometimes i get so i get i i, I get worked up in that area because i walked through that and i i understand that and i understand what people go through how people look at you it's like oh you got a disease or oh something's wrong with you oh i don't want to be around you because oh you know people look at you and, and, and judge you and, and they go and they have no idea they have no idea the talk that you and god has had they have no idea the tears you have cried they have no idea the struggles you went through they have no idea the 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 hurt the pain that you carry on a regular how your outward look had to be your smiles and how on the inside you are feeling all types of way but you still press through because i trust god because god word tells me in psalms 27 god word tells me i uh uh um uh, I, 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 I would have lost hope. I would have lost hope. Psalm 27, uh, 13 and 14. If I would not have believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have lost hope that I, uh, if, if I did not believe what God has told me concerning my marital covenant, but yet I wait on God. Yet I wait on God. Yet I trust God. God says, wait on me and be of good cheer. I said, wait on me and be of good cheer you don't care about what other people think of you for standing for your unhealthy marriage or covenant the only thing you're responsible for is stewing yourself well stewing your emotions well making sure that you are taking care of yourself during this process god is going to deal with the rest shut it down nobody don't have they, they don't have an authority to tell you what you can and cannot do in your marriage or covenant when god has already given you divine orders when god gives you come on jesus when god gives you divine orders orders for your marriage to come and when God give you 
divine orders to stand in your marital covenant and you got somebody over here in your ear saying this, you got somebody over your ear saying this, you got to make sure that you're stewarding yourself well. You got to make sure that you're standing in connection with God. You got to make sure that you are in relationship with Christ. You got to make sure that you get instruct instructions from God himself because people are going to say what they're going to say. Everybody have their own uh, a perspective of how marriage is supposed to be. There even there are even some uh, Christians and religion people that have their own perspective of how marriage is supposed to be. But when God has given you divine orders, come on, Jesus, stand, stand on that, stand on that. God said, be a good cheer, be a good cheer. I have not brought you this far to leave you out hanging. I hope that's been a blessing to you. Blessings.